Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Chuck Mead. He's going to tell you a story about a crazy weekend with Keith Richards and Levon Helm. We were on this big show at the Beacon Theater in New York City. It was a rainforest benefit, and it was all these rock stars and us. And uh, we, we did it because we'd met Steve Jordan, the drummer Steve Jordan, fantastic drummer. Uh, we'd met him doing a benefit out in Los Angeles the year before. And so he asked us to come on this. And it was like, you know, it was us and uh, Odetta and Clarence Gatemouth Brown and Levon Helm and Dr. John and Jackson Brown and uh, Keith Richards, you know, and the Memphis Horns, Kim Wilson from the Fabulous Thunderbirds. Light, Keb Mo was there too, and uh, and then us, and we kept wondering, <laughs> how did we get this gig? I like it, you know, and so we ended up jamming with Lee Vaughn, hanging out a lot with Lee. He saw Elvis, Scotty, and Bill, like, and then he said, and then next year they come back and they had a drummer. <laughs> like, wow, he saw Elvis two times before he was like Elvis. Well, anyway, so you know we're we're doing. We, we did our rehearsal at SIR, and then Keith was right after us at the rehearsal. And we and uh, Levon sat in with us. We did Rolling Your Sweet Baby's Arms. He played mandolin. And we just did a cool version. You know, Donnie's out there burning the fiddle up. It was good. It was real good. And so, you know, Lee knew we were, we were hillbillies. So Donnie played in our band in BR549. He had a straight steel. It wasn't a pedal steel. It was, you know, no pedals, just straight old-time Hank Williams thing. And... uh Keith came in the room and was like, oh, what's this? Fucking, I, I'll have that. So, like, he got Donnie to play with him on Happy. He wanted to play with him on Happy, right? Because he wanted that steel sound. And, of course, Donnie had never even heard Exile on Main Street. <laughs> and so we had to go get a copy at the Virgin Record Store down the street of Exile. So Donnie could listen to Lick. You know, and to his credit, Donnie went up there and played it like a man. It was fucking awesome. I, I was playing it too, actually. I was sitting in because it was like the last song, you know, it was crazy. But anyway, um, so Keith, and he couldn't remember the words. They had to get the words for Keith to happy. Steve was Steve Jordan was just like come, come on you don't remember it, you wrote this song <laughs> it was fantastic you know meanwhile I'm up with the Memphis Horns and Dr John and Levon you know smoking up in the hallway and Hubert Sumlin from who was the guitar player for Howlin' Wolf we were all up in you know in a green haze it was pretty phenomenal experience for stupid idiot from Kansas. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was the night before the show and we ended up going up to Lee's hotel room, listen to blues music, him telling stories all night long. Security came three times to tell us to quiet down. We never did. He was running the shower because, you know, it was after he couldn't sing. This is before he could sing again. And, uh, he had just had the throat, cancer incident and he was he was running the shower because it you know and, and it was in the winter time because it keeps the hotel you know humidified and he was just running the hot water so the steam would come <laughs> it's like the shower was running the whole time loud blues music you know two cases of like the little bottles of coke coca-cola and we were raging it was great it was one of the it was one of the br's finest moments and uh, so then the next day we go down to Beacon Theater, you know, a sound check, and and we're all hanging out. Everybody's there. Everybody's hanging out. Everybody's waiting. You know, nobody's bitching. Everybody's having a wonderful time. You know, you know there didn't seem to me like there was any prima donnas. And um, at the time, I would like, you know, dabbling in tobacco. <laughs> and. Uh, and I, I wanted to smoke, but I didn't have one. And so I went downstairs and, and I was like right next to Keith Richards' dressing room and his daughters were in there. And, and I'm like, hey, Keith, can I bum a smoke? He's like, fucking yes, certainly. <laughs> and he gets me these, these Marlboro, he gets into his Marlboro Reds. And I'm like, 
uh, man, I'm trying to quit, but I'm weak. And he goes, oh, really? I'm a Fortnite. Take two. Put one behind your ear. <laughs> so I smoked one, and I saved one. I got it right over there. <laughs> It's in a bag with uh, a, a cigarette that I smoked with Carl Smith. I have a, I have a cigarette collection. <laughs> Was that the last? Did you see Keith after that? Oh, yeah, on stage. Because, you know, then, then we played, and then it was like a free uh, all skate at the end. Everybody was up on stage playing, and I was, we were jam I was fucking jamming out with Keith Richards <laughs> and Dr. John. Dr. John kept looking at me like, who the fuck is that? It was great. So afterwards, you know, we go back up to Lee's. This is after the gig. There's an after party, and we're supposed to go down to this limousine, or it, you know, it was a it was a SUV van. It was an SIR van. Um, we we're supposed to go down there and meet to be driven over to the after party at this other club. I can't remember where it was, and uh, we got to hanging out with Lee again. And uh, <clears throat> so we come. Walking out of the Hotel W in New York, and the door flies open to that van, and it's Clarence Gatemouth Brown. Get your fucking white asses in this motherfucker. I've been waiting up in this motherfucker for you fuckers for a long... And we're walking out with Jackson Brown, right? And he's yelling all this shit with us, and he kind of looks over and is laughing because, you know, it's Clarence Gatemouth Brown. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we all pile in the van, and I hear Cowboy Keith talking to, to Jackson Brown about some record... That they're doing but in the front was the the driver for sir was an african guy right and so clarence gave my brand just starting to give him shit and then they start giving each other shit you know good humored and uh you mean really from africa yeah like real really from africa african african and and so he, he you know he was like say you from africa you know and th then there were you know there was a connection and <laughs> And so he's starting to give him shit. Well, get this motherfucker up and get it. Where, where are you going? You don't, you don't know how to drive. You from Africa. You don't, you know, just like, uh, you know, that kind of shit. And and the driver was playing right along. He, he gets on the microphone and he goes, uh, dispatch, we have a uh, hostile passenger in here. He goes, give me that motherfucker. You're going to have a dead driver pretty soon because I'm going to stab this motherfucker. <laughs> it was like, it was like that. It was very animated in the front. So he invited us up to, Levon invited us up to his his studio. He said, you got to come up to the studio, spend a whole week. You know, of course he, we, he was going to charge us, right? You know, spend a whole, you know, a couple weeks up there writing songs and just put that hotel money right there in your pocket. <laughs> you stay up at the stay up there, and we were we, so for a long time. We talked about going to band camp at Levon's. Let's go to band camp at Levon's, but we never did. Another another regret. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel, click the like button, and tell me down below what your favorite Keith Richards or Levon Helm song is, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.